EVGA is gone. I mean, I know we all don't like it, but mm. I, I accepted it a long time ago, and now I'm moving on. It's time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now it's just Kingpin, man. This is this is Kingpin Studio, not not EVGA. Right. I don't know if I ever showed you this, but no, you, did. you see, it's not really a Mortal Kombat oh, okay. controller. It drops to around 15 volts and up here around 9 volts. I just like that you're doing Kingpin shit, except on a claw machine. machine, right? And that is the first non EVGA VGA that I've had in my hands for about 13 years. Wow. So does that mean Kingpin cards might be back? It might. Okay. <laughs> it might. It, it might. might. It might. Okay. There's a pretty good chance. We have a special guest and a very big surprise. I'm here in Taipei in Taiwan and Kingpin is back. What's up, Steve? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Kingpin has some pretty big news, but also you have a whole new yeah. lab space. Welcome to my new studio. This is the lab. We'll do a full walkthrough of it. But first thing I want to jump to is there is something on that test bench over there. Yep. And that is the first non EVGA VGA that I've had in my hands for about 13 years. Wow. PNY. Yep. PNY. PNY. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Tower 300. The Tower 300 is a full-on showcase PC case built to present the computer straight on with its angled tempered glass windows or on a unique mounting stand to show off the build in new ways. The Tower 300 has a layout that positions the GPU fans against the mesh panel with ventilation on the opposite side for liquid coolers and CPUs. There's also an included two 140mm fans up top. The panels use a quick access toolless system to be quickly popped in and out for maintenance, and you can learn more at the link in the description below. You think of your former competitors, right? Yeah. Like MSI comes to mind, yeah. Asus comes to mind, yeah. Galax, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, what, what about PNY team has you excited? They are keen to dive into the extreme overclocking. And you know, Asus, MSI, Galax, the other companies, they already do it. Too many cooks in the kitchen, right? Uh -huh. I want to go somewhere where I can actually make a big impact. And I kind of feel like PNY might be that company. So does that mean Kingpin cards might be back? It might. Okay. <laughs> it might, <laughs> it, it might. might, it might. Okay. There's pretty good chance. I know you, you did on Instagram a while ago, it might have been like a year ago now, you had a photo outside of the MSI headquarters. Yeah. And there was a lot of speculation about that. Uh, so I guess safe to, safe to say at this point, you didn't go that direction. I went and I met with some people over there and they weren't that interested. They just, okay. uh, they went a different direction. They, they don't seem to be too interested in extreme sure. overclocking. What's your plan? My plan is to test it. Right now I'm testing the software and um, it's actually pretty nice. It's a lot like our old PX1. Um, just trying to figure out all the, all the details of the software and the lighting and the fans. And uh, I actually got an XOC BIOS for it yesterday. Cool. So you know what I'll do. <laughs> yeah. My observation as kind of an outsider to the manufacturing side, it, it really feels like None of the brands right now are focusing that much on the heavy OC SKUs no, or even not. just the super enthusiast SKUs. They're not. Yeah. Not like EVGA did, right? Right. Yeah. The, the people at PNY maybe think like there's, a, there's an opportunity for them to come up in the enthusiast market there's a little bit. definitely an opportunity. I mean, they're known yeah. for their professional cards, right? Right. And the daily cards. But yeah, there's a huge hole right now in the enthusiast market from EVGA being gone. And it doesn't really seem like the other vendors are too keen to fill it. So in our... our Asus coverage we've been posting, which I know you've seen. Yeah, I've seen your Asus coverage. <laughs> but there've been a ton of comps, because it's all warranty related stuff. Yeah. There've been a ton of comps, we'll maybe show some on the screen about like, I miss EVGA or I miss EVGA support yeah, or I whatever. See. I see all that. Yeah, and so one of the things we should just address right now and, and clear it is, uh, am I correct in saying it is no longer EVGA kingpin? It's just Kingpin. It's just Kingpin, yeah, yeah. EVGA is, EVGA is gone. I mean, I know we all don't like it, but mm. I, I accepted it a long time ago, and now I'm moving on. It's time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now it's just Kingpin, man. This is, this is Kingpin Studio, not, not EVGA. Right. Story with this. <laughs>
That, <laughs> okay. Is this Biso Biso? Okay, I have a pretty funny story. So okay. I, I said that, I, I told you that when uh, 3D Mark reached out, or UL reached out to me and asked me to do 3D Mark, I told him I didn't have a 4090. Yeah. I actually that's, don't have it. Do you weird. know why I don't have a 4090? Is it because? Those guys burned them all last year <laughs> when you were here. Yeah. They yeah. killed them all for yeah. your event. <laughs> it wasn't my event. But this is one from that event. Cool. It's actually a very good GPU. And who knows? Maybe I'll put it on that PMY That'd card. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be cool. Was, uh, do you know if that was one of Biso's? I believe it was. Because he's the one who ultimately set that record at the end of the shoot. Yep. It was on Sen's account. Yep. What are you using the equipment here for? I use it for like, repair. Just, okay. just when something breaks, I'll try to fix it. And if I can't fix it, to the repair center. Cool. And also, I do a lot of work on my electric bikes with the controllers and the wiring. Oh, so yeah. I need this for that too. Right. What was that? Jan Barmet. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw I saw the bar runner. Yeah, we have. Do you know why I like this? Because when I take something apart, the screws don't fall on the floor. Oh yeah. They stay right here. We have a. I'll send it to you. We have a solder mat now. I don't know if you've seen it. Send it. I use all your stuff. I got them all <laughs> yeah, over there too. I know you there's saw a, it. There's a mod <laughs> mat over here. It's like G. This is a GN lab. There's a mouse mat over there. You for the longest time you would wear the hoodie everywhere uh i still do it's yeah. a little too hot now yeah um yeah we have solder mats i'll send you one it's, i have a bunch of those hoodies man like four yeah I, you sent me I, a lot i sent you extra because the brand was discontinuing that model they're so, so comfortable this is tin's old ursa oh cool. it belonged to tin yeah. this thing's special to me man because yeah. it's that's like this is the thing he used the most he's he, always using this do you know is he still at the sort of professional company like the tin is in the science of metrology that's well, what he does. What is that? <laughs> fine, fine measurements. He, he helps to design devices that can measure like 0. 0.00000001, you know? Oh, wow. That like, sounds suitable for him. Yeah, and they use like the, the metrics are used for like professional sports. Like if a pitcher is trying to improve his pitch. Oh, interesting. Like they will use some machine that he has where the ball will hit the mat or or like maybe somebody punching or ah. jumping, and they will use like some something that can measure the performance of the athlete. Interesting, right? Yeah, that's cool. For anyone who doesn't know, Tin um, was sort of the, you worked with him as like a duo. On he a was, the he was like the evil mad scientist. That's what I, I was gonna this, say, this evil group. mastermind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, brilliant engineer. Brilliant, uh, man. He did several videos with us standalone as well about, um, like V-Droop and stuff like that. Dude, Tin, Tin is like, Tin is honestly is one of the smartest guys I've ever met. Yeah, cool. the first thing I did was turn the RGB off. <laughs> you know, I'm not an RGB fan. Yeah. I'm excited to see where you go with it. Me too. I heard, you know, the vendors, maybe this year, there's a new car coming, not sure. Uh-huh. I have also heard that rumor. I, I feel like now's the time. Yeah. Right? There's a rumor two days ago, though, saying the opposite. It was like... Wasn't coming? It said, yeah, so like last week... I wonder who put that out. <laughs> <laughs> last week, it was, uh, it was they're definitely going to be here in a year. And then two days ago, it was the 50 Series Battle Mage, 8000 Series is all next year. But I spoke with... Um, well, I can't name them, I guess. But I spoke with several of the board partners. And they're mm -hmm. all like, yeah, 50, 80, end of year. So... Definitely. What would you do for styling if you end up doing another KP card? Like, are you going to stick with the black and gold? What do you think? <laughs> so, okay, so. You think I'm going to make a white one? So black, and, <laughs> black and gold, got it. These are limited. The air cooler can only do so much, right? Yeah. Right now I have it running right where sort of the GPU boost will kick in okay. and sort of start to drop the clock. And you, you, there's, no set, there's no point to overclock higher than that, right? Mm. Like I could set 3.1 or three, but it's still dumping the 2850 so or 2900. Can, yeah, can you explain that behavior for everybody? So the way GPU boost works is it uses like power, thermals, loading, uh -huh. and it, all, of these, all of these factors work together to control the, the clock of the GPU. Because if you're playing a game, do you really want it to crash? Right, no. No. Yeah. You, you, you won't notice that the clock dropped 20 megahertz in some part where it's heating up, right? right? But in the old days, it would just crash. Yeah. Because they didn't have GPU boost, right? So actually, GPU boost, I've, 
I've learned is is a really good thing for like average consumers. It's a nice nice thing that Nvidia did. Well, but it's like what AMD does with the CPUs now. It boosts the maximum capability of the silicon. Intel too, right? Yeah. It's almost yeah. like everything just overclocks to the max out of the box. Now. Yeah. So is there still room then for OC? I mean, clearly there is, but you know, what's your take on on that, I guess? Well, I, if this thing had a liquid cooler on it, obviously it would have a little more headroom. And yeah. that's why I put, that's why the later generations of the Kingpin cards all had AIOs because mm -hmm. it's, it would, wouldn't make much sense for an overclocking card to have an air cooler, right? The next thing I would hit would probably be the power limit, okay. right? But I could pop the XOC BIOS in and remove that. Let's do that too. So we should talk about the, just like general education program, because it's been a little while since we've really talked about GPOC yeah, on the channel. About that. Yeah. So let's explain that slider for people. I'll let you do it. That's, that controls the TDP of the card. It's going to be limited to a certain amount of watts, no mm -hmm. matter what. So overclocking past that point actually does nothing, right? It's right. just going to start clipping yeah. and drop the clock, and it will drop the frames. When you put an XOC BIOS on it, it removes that limit. So completely. Completely. But if, I'm, if I was to put the XOC BIOS, say, on this card and mm -hmm. still run it at 50C, the GPU boost will still drop the clock okay. because of the thermals. They're all tied. Right. So to, to really max out a card, you need to have the cooling, number one. You need to run it below 31C. Mm -hmm. If you can keep the card below 31C, there's no GPU boost. Okay. That will downclock the card. And if you put a unlock power limit on the card, then you can actually overclock. That's where it starts. Where does voltage come in? Because that's part of the equation too. Not, not on an AIO, man. Okay. Not, on, not like this. Okay. Voltage will come in to around my, maybe minus 40, minus 50. You'll start to apply voltage. So do you... Couple questions. Have you burned one of these yet? Like a 12 volt high power cable? No. Okay. I've, I've not had any issues, man. Do you think you will have to, like, let's assume you work with PNY or someone else. Do you, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I already thought about it, man. Okay. Not there. So you have to do two. Yeah, right? for an Exos, th that's great for a daily card, but for XOC card, no way. So, because EVGA was doing that too. If you look at like the 3090s, they were over here. Yeah. If, you're, if you're mounting a pot to the uh -huh. card, do you really want a power connector right here? And actually it's hot here. The memory, the PCB gets very hot. Yeah. So over here is much cooler on the end of the card. That makes sense. And it just looks cleaner, right? Yeah. Now, interesting, interestingly enough, when we originally did the, uh, the 3090 Ti, mm -hmm. they told me I couldn't put two power connectors on the card. Who's they? EVJ or? They. They. <laughs> yeah. Got it. They just, they said they couldn't put two power connectors on a card. Yeah. And uh, we did some back and forth and then finally it was okay. Uh -huh. But they had to be completely electrically isolated from each other with their own input phases. So all the input isn't coming into one input, you know, mm -hmm. they'll be more balanced. Okay. So what is your dream team? If you could, if you could set the terms completely, how, what's your kind of philosophy for product design for this? Okay. I'd want. I'd want a few, maybe one or two dedicated engineers uh -huh. just for this product. I'd want uh, one or two dedicated layout people just for this product. Like PCB? Yeah. I'd, I need to be able to work with the thermal team directly. Um, I'd want to do the cooler design 100%. All the cooler designs on the Kingpin I did. Okay. So, but I, you know, I want to have control over every aspect of the product. Right. That's really important to me. What, what is it? that what makes you want that you're like because i just this product is the, the, all those products all the motherboards all the video cards they're they're all exactly the way i want them mm -hmm. and um they've been pretty successful my approach to design is i always take the other other guys input for sure i yeah. don't want them to feel like i'm dictating everything about the card right. and it's a team right yeah at these large companies, each team will have their own PMs and those PMs report to other division mm -hmm. PMs. And when you want something on the card, especially like cost up things, you know, like a lot of the gold plating, right. extra layers on the PCB, large power planes, higher, those things yeah. cost, it brings the cost of the card up. So I, I, I need to be able to go directly to the people who make those kinds of decisions like I did here with Andrew. Right? Yeah, right. That makes sense. You've got a YouTube channel now too. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, We've I do. Been, I've influenced you. Yes. In terrible ways. In terrible ways. <laughs> yeah. And I actually have mad respect for this guy because I'm finally learning how hard it is to actually make <laughs> videos. I think the you should check them out because the second one, let's jump over here really quick. So your second video was about this thing. The KPX claw machine. Yeah. You want me to flip it on? Yeah, let's do it.
Right. So you had a video. I have, for just some context for anyone, we won't go like super deep into this rabbit hole, but <laughs> these claw machines are wildly popular in Taiwan. It's like, big time. if you're a foreigner and you come here, one of the first things you're gonna see is just an arcade filled with claw machines. It's like this whole mini side hustle that people do. And you know, I, they're not like the US claw machines. No, <laughs> they're sketchy, man. Yeah, the US <laughs> ones, like you kind of know, you know, but there's a little bit more skill involved. Yeah. These, it's like, you'll grab it and it gets up here yeah. and then it's just like, no, f you. Yeah, it, it just drops, drops it. it. Yeah. yeah, and some of the machines will actually, when they pick it up, they actually open. Yeah. That's the real, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so what is, it's currently filled with Kingpin Thrive based. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I have all these different sizes in there. The one G's, all the overclockers have been coming here all week and hammering this thing. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> it's got music. Yep. <laughs> you didn't hear that. I, I turned it off for the video. <laughs> <laughs> I would go for that 30 right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's got this little spin right at the end. Watch this. It's really extra tricky. Oh, <laughs> go for it, man. Look at this guy. You ain't getting those. You know why? <laughs> are they They're all taped down. <laughs> I'm trying to get them on floor. I can't believe you're trying to rip yeah. my wall apart. <laughs> I think he's got it. <laughs> wow. Oh! Nice. That'll go yeah. a long way. That'd be a... Uh... That would have cost me like 40 bucks. <laughs> Explain the voltage stuff to me on this. Okay, so the way that these claws work is it's driven by a voltage signal, right? Uh -huh. And at, at around 48 volts, God damn it. <laughs> at around 48 volts, it's at max strength. I mean, this thing can pick up almost 1.5 kg. That's a lot. I know, okay. right? These are light. Yeah. Like there's no way that it cannot pick that up, right? Right. And the... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. And that's how they set them up, man. They set them up. So there's three places where I can change the voltage. I got it set so when it comes down here, it grabs it hard. But uh -huh. when it comes up here, the voltage starts to weaken. It drops to around 15 volts, then up here around nine volts. I just like that you're doing cane pin shit, except on a claw, claw machine. machine, right? On my street, there must be three or four of those arcades on one block. I know? think you should set one up for real and like, like actually put a KPX one out there. You know what I'm thinking about doing? Lately, have you guys been to Guanghua this trip? Yeah, uh, not this trip, but I went. I was recently. actually thinking about opening up a Kingpin Cooling branding store sick. and put fill it with these claw <laughs> yeah, machines with thermal yeah. grease. Wouldn't that be sick, You should man? do that. So these dip switches actually control a lot of things. Like they control the set gift amount. Okay. They control how many coins uh, required for one play. Um, also, I can do different things. Like I can actually program the voltage of those claws. And you see these three VRs? Yeah. Those are the VRs with the three stages, the bottom one, okay. the middle one, and the high one. And depending on what I set these, these three at, I can tune the voltage that you see. Cool. Now, if I max them all out, it will be 48 volts all the time. Okay. Like, I, like I showed in the video, so right? it just always grabs. Always grabs. Okay. But there's no way I was going <laughs> to take the copy text and let it do that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Would have been more That's fun cool. to watch them struggle. This is AI before AI was cool. <laughs> yeah. Right? Before it was a buzzer. How old is this? Six years? Yeah. Five, five, six years? Was this Tin worked on this with you, right? Yeah, this is yeah. mine and Tin's. I, I couldn't have done this without him. Man. Yeah. He did all the... Uh, he did all the Raspberry Pi stuff. And the uh, software, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he did a really good job. Um, I, I built all the hardware, the, tested all the valves. Um, I spent a lot of time doing that. Like with, when you're, when you're trying to flow LN2 like this, and honestly, I believe this is the future of overclocking. If, doesn't it just make sense? Like this so kind of thing? Explain, remind me how it worked. Okay, the way it works is, so I can, <laughs> Do you want that on or no? Want me to turn it off? Should, It'll keep coming on. We should man. turn it off. <laughs> it's the same thing. It was the same, same thing the other day. Okay. So the way this thing works is I, I input the LN2 from back here. Yeah. And these, these valves can control the flow depending on, you know, remember before it used to be manual? Yeah. I had each valve connected to a different button. On the Mortal Kombat? Yeah. On the, <laughs> on the Mortal Kombat controller. I don't know if I ever showed you this, but. No, you didn't. You see, it's not really a Mortal uh, Kombat okay, controller. Cool. Yeah. This was Roboclocker? Yeah, this yeah. was Roboclocker, and it uses, it uses power, 
power loading of the CPU and also temperature. And if you don't, if you don't actually measure the power, you cannot ramp it up fast enough. Okay. You know, you have to measure the power yeah. that the card and the CPU meaning, are taking. Meaning you can't get LN2 to the components fast enough if you're not measuring the power? No, it will become unstable. Okay. But if you measure the power, it yeah. can actually ramp up really fast. So that was the, the AI load. part. You know what's like crazy to me is if, if we shift all that to now and you did this thing today, people would be like- It would be huge. I don't know. I think, so I think it would be huge to people like NVIDIA. Yeah. I think yeah. viewers would be like, F this. Buzzword I've had way too much yeah. AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, all the, the other people who visited here, they were just like so much AI this year. Yeah, it was too much. And we gave you uh, an award for it. Yes, this is the very first Gamers Nexus Innovation Award. I was so <laughs> proud when you gave that to me that day. Yeah, I told you we've, we did that for like two years. We gave Noctua the uh, two years in a row, the, the least RGB bullshit at a trade show award. Uh, <laughs> we gave you this one. That would be a cool award to get actually. What do you got up here? Uh, up here is, up here is kind of that area where we did the graffiti wall. You can actually see that in my first video. This is sort of like podcast stuff. Uh, I can do like some talking head videos, mm. uh, maybe like even hardware builds. I think I can back the camera out a little bit and do, do hardware builds here in front of this wall. So like this rail system over here, we have a rail system now. It was inspired by when this was across the hall in your old space. I remember you were like checking it out. Yeah. As soon as we got back from visiting your studio, I asked Mike on the team to research it and figure out how to build a rail system. Nice. It's very helpful, man. It keeps, it keeps the lights and stuff out of the yeah. way, right? Yeah. What are you using for the camera? Uh, I have two A7S3s right now. Uh -huh. And these are actually, I think these are good enough. 100%. Do you guys shoot on uh, 60 FPS? We do, yeah. Everything do. always 60 4K FPS. 60, and then when we're here, we do 1080. I saw in your general video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was making it's, fun of me for it. Speaking of him, look. Yeah. <laughs> did he visit or did you buy No, it? I, I, just, I love these cables, Yeah, no, man. they're nice. We actually, we still use the one he gave me on the uh, I have them here on, on my, my product picture setup. Hey, he'll like that. There's uh, Gerald Undone's signature cable. Yeah, I love that guy. I love watching him. Yeah, no, I learned a lot actually from watching his videos. That's cool. He's got really good studio videos. Thank this is a good setup too though. So just the top down. Yeah, it's nice. It's good for product picture. Um, you know, pretty soon I'm going to redo my site. I'm going to change all the pictures. Yeah, so you're obviously still doing Kingpin cooling. Oh yeah. Based on the claw machine. Definitely. A ton of 1600 watt. Love that power supply, man. That is probably the most badass power supply ever made. What about over here, other than the gym? Uh, I got a little gym to keep in shape. This is the old... Gaming arena. Yep. You have your own metal detector. You remember we did RoboClocker here, right? Yes. It was right here on the stage. Yeah. When you're working with li liquid nitrogen, it's obviously under a lot of pressure, and you need pressure release valves. Yeah. And one of the pressure release valves on RoboClocker actually got stuck, and the pressure started to build up in the system. And I wasn't here when it happened. I walked out. <laughs> to the bathroom or something and I came back. And as I was coming back, I heard boom! It was like a shotgun noise. And I came in here and <laughs> the machine was obviously off and Joe and Jacob were hiding under the benches, <laughs> literally hiding under the benches, man. Well, so was there any indication that the pressure valve wasn't working? No. Okay. No, there was, and the way I had it, it was really, it was sort of raw, you know? Yeah. Um, the pressure release valve got stuck the pressure build up and actually the back of the block that was on the GPU blew off. Oh, wow. It was soldered. It okay. blew off, man. Like a can of tuna, just <laughs> pew. What do, you, what do you think you're gonna do with this space ultimately? Cause you've got your, you have the Church of Kingpin pews. Yeah, and now I have my own church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and maybe next Computex. <laughs> yeah. We'll have the first service. <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, maybe, maybe next Computex. I'll be standing right there showing a new product. Presenting something. To, to some press that I invited here. Yeah. Who knows, right? I can pretty use this cool. space for a lot of things. And that, that display is pretty cool. Maybe I'll do some overclocking on that, like yeah. a Roboclocker part two. Yeah, it'd be cool. Get your old team out too, yeah. Lumi and Sans and yeah. Biso. Yeah, it'd be great. You want to talk about this bad boy? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's going on here? I'm going to build this in, uh, in uh, one video, maybe two or three videos. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is a full-size electric supermoto. Okay. Um, about 20, 21,000, uh, 21,000 watt. Yeah, 21 kilowatt. What's your kilowatt. answer, Vitaly? 
He was asking me how many kilowatts. Yeah, or this like, one's going to be t about 21. You, so what's it's the, got a 70 amp hour battery, a 72 volt, 70 amp hour. 72 uh, volt. It's got six speed. It's got a rear foot brake like a bike. It's got a yeah. clutch. It, it's a, it, it's full. I mean the base of the size of the wheels. It's a, it's actually a real bike. Yeah, you yeah. can tell, right? I got the slicks, supermoto slicks and dirt bike tires. This is the battery for it, dude. Pick that up. Wait till you on see the, how, on yeah. my right. Yeah. Wait till you see how heavy that is. Should I lift with my, uh, should I lift properly? Oh my. 72 volt, 70 amp hour. They have it labeled 50, but it's actually 70. They did this to get it through customs. Okay. <laughs> because if gotcha. it was 70, they would have stopped it. All right. 26 kilograms. I like how quality, quality is 26 kilograms. <laughs> Walk me through the, okay. the, the bike. This is the frame for that, uh -huh. that six speed bike. This is huge. Yeah. This is a Suron. I'm sure probably a lot of your viewers are familiar with these. They're, they're really popular yeah. in the States. And I'm fully modding this bike. I have, uh, obviously I just put the Fox 40 on it. I put a direct mount stem. Fox uh, 40s are great. Yep. I ride direct mount on, on my bike. Got also. you, right? Yeah. For something like this, you have to have yeah. direct mount. Especially, I want to I learn how to ride on the front wheel. What's the wiring here? Is this... For this is a new throttle. This is called a domino throttle and the voltage the voltage range is actually different We talked about that once the way that these work is there's a voltage signal, right? Yeah, and you can actually adjust it mm -hmm. You know, you can adjust the curve you can and the way I do it is I have it so I can just and all the torque is there So it just pops yeah, right that's up. how I set mine up too So it's I have like all the torque in the first probably quarter. Otherwise time. you're like in it. Yeah, there's not much at the end for me I see you switch to just pegs for some of these instead of pedals. Yeah, this one is the only one that has the pedals. I use this one, like if I want to go to an area where there's a lot of police, Yeah, I will take this. But these, sometimes we get a hard time. It doesn't work in the US, by the way. The, it doesn't? Yeah. The, you yeah. can't fake pedal? <laughs> I mean. So like your mountain bike, that looks pretty bike, you know? It doesn't the look. EMTB is no problem because that's within all the clear limits. These types of bikes are in like gray area mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. And so like when I got pulled over on the e, the actual e-bike, uh, you know, I saw him and I was in the speed limit and I was in the right lane, but the car going on my left was under the speed limit. And so I was passing the car mm -hmm. and uh, oh, I, saw, I saw the cop pull out and I started pedaling. <laughs> and, uh, no, he said, he came up to me and he said, I saw when you saw me, you put the pedals on. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny, man. He was pretty cool. He was just like, he said, Smart. He said, uh, you know, you can't ride this. I said, why? And he said, it looks illegal. And I said, is it illegal? And he said, just go home. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. What else? Uh, anything else you want to cover either in the space, you know, or just like go over with? Mm. Not really. I think we've seen everything. So the future. We're just going to, I'm just going to work my ass off, man. I just, I'm, making videos is actually a lot harder than I ever thought it would be. I'm really having a good time learning how yeah. to do everything. Learning the editing, learning how to use the equipment, learning about sound. And, you know, those are good skills to have, even like if I do, do work with them later on. Well, I mean, even as you do more work with media, like yeah. if, if you end up making a KP card. Yeah, no, that's cool. Sweet. Well, hopefully, uh, I don't know when it'll be, if it's for whenever NVIDIA launches 50 series or just Computex next year, but hopefully you'll have something for us. We'll, we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll this see. is, it's a long process and this is sort of the start of it. Yeah. Did you, you said to me, you wanted to see what the audience thinks about the brand. Yeah. So, I'm curious what you guys think. I, so pause it and leave your comment before I say this so I don't influence it. But my suspicion is that PNY, broadly speaking, there's probably not a lot of opinions on, which is good, yeah. I think. Cause That's my feeling, man. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of room to run. It seems, for our audience, it seems pretty neutral because they're kind of, they're the quadro company, yeah. you know? So I haven't really worked with them, but they appear to have a cleaner streak than uh, some of the other companies. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Yeah, they're clean. In my opinion, it's, it's like you said, you know, most people just kind of have a neutral feeling about the company. Yeah. I kind of like that. Which is For good. me, it's like a blank slate. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. Well, good luck with it. Thanks again. Thank for you, man. Through. Thank yeah. you. Check out his channel. What is the channel name? All About Kingpin. All About Kingpin on YouTube. We'll link it below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.